VBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Well, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Oh, today is a good day. Yesterday was a fun day. Today's going to be a great day as well. So you're going to join me as I set up for this next thing that we do. I'm going to talk with you all for a minute. So I've had a weird phenomenon. 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 That has come up. Um, I have had several of thy fellow builders contact me here in the last little bit about different things. And one of the major things that I've had happen here recently to me is I've had several builders contact me and they were a little excited that their products we're here. And what I mean by excited, I mean like really excited. And there's two ways that you can handle that, that energy from their side of the street. And it's been interesting to me on the level of seeing how these guys have made it through their thought making processes to approach me. So, first off, let me, just, let me just say that this platform here that I have built for myself, this channel, um, I put it together for two reasons. One, I couldn't find anybody that wanted to teach me anything when I first started. Um, the people that did know something, they felt entitled or enlightened to, uh, well, make it a point known that they knew more than me and therefore I was stupid and I shouldn't be doing what I was doing. And that really irritated me, so I thought, well, whatever I managed to learn or educate myself over, I'm going to disseminate it completely indiscriminatorily across the masses. So how do I do that? And I said, well, I need a public forum. And then the other reason I started this channel was so that people could see what I was working on transparently. Here's your box. This is what it did when it came in here. This is what it does now that it leaves. It's working. And give them a visual means of communication. Because nobody knew who I was. There was no standard that had been built around my name yet. There was none. I didn't exist. I was new. The main thing past those two points was I told myself in the beginning coming from a product place of where so many people felt it was appropriate to say negative shit about somebody else in their opinions that I would never jump on that bandwagon myself. My whole goal here with this is to teach. Teach what I know. If it's not correct, please tell me. I'm open to that. I love when people call me and say, hey, hey, uh, hey, BBI, there's a group of us that watch you and we love what you do, but uh, we're a little concerned because you keep saying this one thing and it's wrong, even though you know you're, you're reading things and your readings are correct, you keep saying the wrong thing. I do that quite often. It's a physical flaw in me, but on, on, a, on a scale of like, you know, fail, pass, pass being 4.0, I get about a 3.8, 3.9 most of the time. That's as close to perfection as we're ever going to get out of any human being, I think. My terminology is off every once in a while, but eh, the overall result usually is pretty much on the money, I feel. Like I had a guy call me and he was super polite, way kind, down to, heart, down to earth, kind-hearted and humbled, and he says, man, 
This is an 10 to 1 reduction probe, as you've been saying now for years, like five years. He goes, uh, look at the meter a little bit closer, brother. It's 1,000 to 1. I said, like, oh. One of the moments where you're like, yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. <clears throat> and you just got to own it in life. You guys got to understand that fortunately, unfortunately, and absolutely not bragging here, this is a pretty large forum that I have. I have people that literally hang on every single word that I say. And I've got to be very careful and I'm very aware of this when I come out here to come do these little videos. I'm very aware that uh, what I say carries a lot of weight in people's opinions and things. So I have to be careful of what I choose to say. So, guys, listen. And I'm saying this to the two guys that called me freaking out. One was very hostile and was very aggressive. And I'm here to tell you that hostileness, trying to become aggressive with me, will only end in pain for you. Either it be in the physical sense, uh, the communication sense, or in public and, you know, try to intimidate me in any way. That doesn't work. It doesn't hold any water with me and it will never get you anywhere. It'll actually end very poorly for you because people in this world, believe it or not, are very sick of all the constant negativity. You decide that you're going to be negative about something, they just decide they're done with you. And all of a sudden your platform that you'd built for yourself falls away. That was one guy's way of handling it. The other guy's way of handling it was, damn dude, I don't want to ever build nothing that comes up on your, on your workbench. How do I go about and he started asking questions. I didn't realize that I had that impact, but then I sat back and I thought about it. I'm like, wow, you know, um, I might have that impact on another person's business. Look, it's not my job to talk shit. It's my job to fix the equipment. It's just another job. It's just another amplifier. And believe me when I tell you it's nothing personal. I don't have enough time for personal things. I don't. And it's never going to come from me as a personal thing. If you build a box that's effed up and somehow it finds its way here, I look at it as like, well, I don't know if so-and-so did this. Um, the radio community is very full of people with soldering irons and like to stick fingers in things. So I always fall on the other side of the conclusion that somebody else had been in there and done some stuff. Um, <laughs> And another gentleman called me, he was really, really excited um, that his logo was on a box that was on my workbench. And my first question to him, which didn't get answered very clearly from him, was have you even watched the video? In this particular sense, it was an amplifier that I had already previously rebuilt that had come here as a rebuild from somebody else but the original logo that was on the cabinet was still present. And I think I very clearly stated that in that video when I said, hey man, this is a rebuild of a rebuild and all we're doing, gonna use out of it is the transistors. And since I'd already rebuilt it, it had my output transformers in it and some of the other stuff I like to do, the boxes in it. But for some reason, this particular builder's brain got hung up on the fact that his logo was present on that box and he thought it might reflect negatively upon his business, which I thought was absurd, but I couldn't get an answer out of him if he'd actually bothered to watch the video. And I think if he would have, instead of going off something that the he said, she said nation had said, I don't think I would have gotten a phone call at all. My goal is to educate, help teach, motivate, um, mentor people, and prove to people that if it's broken, us as radio operators and amateur operators, we should be able to fix it. We should be able to take our own hands and lay it upon it. This is very, most of this stuff is very basic through board technology. Big parts, we get to use big soldering irons, big, big parts with easily, clearly readable values to them. Just saying. So that's my goal. That's my mission. Help educate, 
um, have a level of transparency and be able to show people what actually has happened with their products from when they got here until when they leave. So if you are out there and you feel that this platform is being used to hurt other people or belittle other people, in my opinion, you couldn't be farther from the truth because that's not my desire and that's not the way I conduct myself. So please do yourself a favor, quit making yourself look foolish and spreading those kind of rumors or ideas or lies. We're here to have fun. Now, my job for today is this. It's another Viking, you guys. It's a V3200, or the DX3200. Viking, three point, oh, here, let's come down here where we're actually in frame. Sorry about that. It's a DX3200, otherwise known as the Viking 3 or the 3.2 KW Texas Star. Um, this particular amp has got a long story attached to it. And as I get set up to test it, I'm gonna tell you the story. This gentleman sent me some amps many, many years ago. And he sent me this amplifier, and we're talking three and a half years ago now, almost four years ago now. And he says, BBI. I'm like, yeah, man. He goes, dude, I'm going to go in. I'm going to get some surgery done. I'm like, oh, God, what are you going to do? Because I know this guy's age. I said, man, what are you going to do? And he says to me, he goes, I'm going to go, and I'm going to get my knees replaced, and I'm going to get my hips replaced. And I just went silent. I was like, oh, shit. That's some serious work. If you think about it, and I'm thinking about this man's age, and I went, Phew. That's rough. I said, okay, man. Well, give me a call when you get done with surgery. And you get yourself right again, and we'll come along and we'll do this amp. Well, a month goes by. Two months go by. Three months go by. And I don't hear anything from this guy. So I start calling, because now I'm concerned. I have a, a working relationship with this person for their equipment, but in the same breath, you know, I kind of consider this person a friend in a way. In the same breath, I'm a little bit concerned because I don't want to get stuck with this equipment. This has the full fan kit attached to it, you guys. And it's in a, in a state of 10 being new, this is about a 9.9. .9. I call, no answer, I call, no answer, I call, no answer, I call, no answer, I call, no answer. I call, let's see, we're going to want to use the Striker 490 on this one, which is going to be the black coax, or the blue coax. And this person, um, a female orientation, answers the phone and says, what do you want? Not hello, not hi. What do you want? And I said, hello, my name is BBI. I have, and I'm omitting the name, piece of equipment here for repair. Um, is he available? And she goes, no, he almost died today. Don't call back. And she hung the phone up. And I went, whoa. Now, me being me, um, I don't know, I'm of the opinion that uh, most repair shop, ant builder guys, would have taken that as a green light and they probably would have just sold the thing because they ended up, you know, they'd be ended up with it forever. Me on the other hand, I went and I put it in shrink wrap, um, threw a desiliconite bag in, in with it. Just in case there was any moisture, I've got little desiliconite bags. I threw a desiliconite bag in there with it, wrapped it all up in uh, pallet wrap, black pallet wrap and proceeded to stick it up in a closet. I was like, well, we'll see if he shows up or not. I need the space out in the shop. So about three months ago, he calls me and says, hey man, how you doing? And I'm like, where have you been? He goes, no, I'm okay, how are you doing? I said, no, 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 I said, no, 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 no. I said, where have you been for three years, man? So he goes on to tell me. 
He's got his hips done. He's got his knees done. And in this amount of time he's had, I think two or three heart attacks. He's now got congestive heart failure. Um, he's just not doing well. I said, man, I called and I got somebody on the phone and they said, you almost died a couple times. Or you did die and not to call back. And he goes, well, I did die almost a couple times, like four. <laughs> Shit. He says to me in a really tender voice, well, um, BBI, the main reason I'm calling today is uh, I want to know if you still have my amplifier. I said, well, yeah, of course I do. You know, every once in a while I'll bitch about how much equipment I have that's sitting here that's abandoned. And I do that quite often because I've got a lot of equipment here that's been repaired. When I couldn't get a hold of this guy, I stopped. Because if he ends up dying and somebody from his estate calls me, I want to do everything I can to help the estate. Either return the equipment or sell it and help the estate make some money back on the deal. So I just, I didn't even touch this box. It's been sitting in storage now in my home for almost four years. I bitch and bitch and bitch about these kind of things, but to be able to tell this man when he called me, well, yeah, I've got it sitting right here. Of course, where else do you think it would be? That makes up for everything else. That's a good feeling to have, especially taking into account, one, how valuable this box is. Um, I just sold the other, it's still here, by the way. You know what, hold on, hold on, hold on. I had to go grab this real quick because this is getting ready to leave here. Uh, this particular person called me up and bought this thing, and it has not left here yet. They haven't paid the shipping on it, but it's ready to go. This is mine that I just recently got rid of, and this is the one I've had sitting in storage. When he initially called me, he was a little concerned, thinking that the one that just went up for sale was his. I'm like, no, two completely separate things. <laughs> One is mine, the other one is somebody else's. There, there, here, it's a hook. It's a B3200, all right. Play different serial numbers too. This one's number 36. Focus here. Focus. Focus. There we go. 36, right here. And it's still focused on the background. I'm not going to waste your guys' time anymore. Anywho, this is yours. I haven't tested this. I don't know its condition. I don't know its state. I don't know anything about it. Other than none of the 10 ohms are burnt. None of the balancing resistors are whacked out. Um, this thing looks like 99.99999% stock because it is. And uh, my goal is to just do a check it out, make sure we have functionality on things, which is really important. Um, make sure that the $210 a piece transistors in here are still tits. And if they're still good, we, uh, we're going to do a little power wire upgrade to it. And we're going to square up the tin a little bit because it's got a little bit jostled in shipment getting here, shipping. And then we're going to get it the freak out of here before. Um, I think the cutoff date for shipping this year is going to be around the 24th of this month, which is only like 10 days away. And I'm going to start talking about that a lot in videos. Listen, um, the brown shitbox kickers, let's talk about this real quick on this video. The brown shit, shitbox kickers are horrible. And if Amazon is any kind of guess what UPS and FedEx is like, uh, Amazon Prime came to the shop today and dropped stuff off. And they pulled up in front. The temporary employee that they hired hopped out of the truck, ran the package up to the door. Meanwhile, the driver, the full-time employee, turned the truck around. He hopped back in the truck and they left. What did I take from that? Being a shipper, okay. Um, the plague of the shipping industry has descended. They're like locusts. They show up from November, December, and into January. In November, December, and January, the driver pool of UPS, FedEx, and now Amazon literally triples in size. They hire a bunch of temporary employees, and I'm here to tell you those people give zero 
frigs, fire trucks, farts, fudge packs, fadingles, flitax. They don't give a shit. Um, I had one year where I had zero packages damaged in shipping. And in the month of December, I had six insurance claims. Ever since then, I ship nothing. And I mean nothing. I wouldn't even ship a coax connector in the month of December. Maybe a block of like titanium. Because I guarantee it's going to show up scratched, but it's almost impossible to dent it. Look, I, I don't want to redo the work twice. And I don't want to create any more work for myself. I have enough here on the, my little listing of things that I have to do to where I can't redo stuff multiple times. It's just not, it's just not possible. So if all I got to do is make you wait a couple more weeks to get your product so it doesn't get bent to shit, smashed to death, crammed to the ground. Hey, hate to break it to you. That's what's going to happen. Okay, so instead of making you guys get motion sick. Huh. We got nothing. Well, let's see. No fuse. Oh, this is discouraging. No fuse. No fuse. No fuse. No fuse. No fuse. No fuse. Either somebody needed a bunch of fuses and they robbed them out of the back of this amplifier, or they're all popped for some reason, and they removed them. Now he tells me, he goes, it's been so long, I can't remember what happened with that amplifier. I bet you this thing got hooked up backwards at some point or another. We're measuring from positive to negative on the amplifier. It's showing a dead short. I have not done anything with this, so I don't know what the current state of this thing is. Wow, that is just crushing. Man, it's sad. That makes me sad on the inside. Either one of the protection diodes has gone open or the amplifier got hooked up backwards and it shorted internally through the transistors. Oh, that makes me sad. <laughs> Power supply turning off. Electrolytics inside the, the switching supply bleeding down. Dead short. I had to think long and hard about that one. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. This can't be shorted out like this. It just can't be. It just can't be. There'd be some kind of internal damage, and I'm telling you, the inside of this thing is freaking pristine. Um. I'm not on my regular power supply. See over here in a corner, I know you guys know this. But over here in a corner, I have my battery bank, which is about 12,000 amps. I mean, I've got, what, 12 batteries down there. 
and then I've got a 200 amp supply that that feeds these batteries and charges them. Over here I have the 1000 amp supply that's made of Meanwell switchers. And I'm hooked up to the, the switching supply. And what I was metering was the capacitor bank all the way back to the power supply. Where'd all the fuses go? And do I have enough to fill all the fuse holders? You know, uh, I don't. <laughs> Even though we're going to do a complete bypass on the fuses completely um, in this particular situation, I, I really want to test this before I go any further and I want to show that all the transistors are working uh, before I go and invest all the time, energy, and effort into upgrading the power wires and whatnot. So that means. ass is off to the store. Woo, yay! It's an interesting factoid. This is amp number 67. The other amp is number 56. They're 11 years apart, or 11 units apart. Now I'd like to believe, you know, because I live in this, this fantasized based world. Um, that there's a big place some, somewhere or sometime and in some universe um, where there's an assembly line. As we think of today, where shit was rolling down an assembly line and stuff was getting installed and Shit was getting built. Let's see, one, two, three, four. And these amps were probably in the same room together during production. Now, knowing the reality of the situation when it comes to these, um, and looking at the, the quality of the solder work and the way things are laid out, and now understanding just a tiny little bit about manufacturing. Believe me when I say this, as truthful a statement as I can ever make. Tiny, a little bit about new manufacturing, that <clears throat> these two amps, even though they're 11 units apart, were probably never even in the same location. Some of the parts were at the same time. They didn't make very many of these, and I don't think that they built very many of them in a row. So being that they're 11 units apart, and noticing the, the way things are put together consistently, I think the same couple people have been building Texas Stars for all these years. Yeah, and I just don't think it's ah, been publicly talked about. You know, because there's that... Ah, so rumor has been floating around that these are all made in Mexico. Then they've got the sticker that says, proudly assembled in America. And I would have to lean towards the idea that uh, maybe the manufacturing and where they're made and who makes them and how they're made and who, what, where, when, and how have been a closely guarded secret. What you think? I think I'm right. So I don't think that these two are made together. Ah, okay. Because this connector is so tight and the bar on the fuse holders go that direction. Don't fight me like this. Come on. Come on. But Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Okay, there you go. All right. We're going to try to get this one in here, but I doubt it's going to work. I always wondered when I was a kid why when these fuses would pop for whatever reason. They'd always like the young guy to change them. Okay. 
All right, let's put some voltage to it now. And really all we're out to do is to demonstrate this thing works. Really. We're not out to get every watt out of it we can right now. I just want to start out slow because it's been a while since this thing's seen an electron. Let's make sure we're off. Hello, hello, hello. 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 One, 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 one. Okay, so we're going to put about 100 watts into it. We're going to use the Striker 490 here. Sorry for the side view, but it is what it is. Hello. About 100 watts. So, oh, turned right on. Right on, right on. Alright, everything's heating up like it should. What I'm looking at is this combiner resistor. I'm looking at this combiner resistor. These combiner resistors. And these combiner resistors. And I'm looking for heat. Because remember, if there's an imbalance in the box, it's going to show up as heat in the resistors, right? So far, the only thing heating up are the ceramic resistors, otherwise commonly referred to as sandstone resistors. So let's see, what do we got our dead key at? Two watts. Two watts in is getting us 20 watts out. Hello, hello, hello. Go up to 2x. Hello, hello. 1800 watts. We're working. If we've seen imbalance in these resistors, this resistor, and so on, we'd probably see a 10 ohmer start to get hot and each one of the transistors is lighting up and providing heat to the heat sink. You know, so it's showing me it's working. Um, even though we're putting very little power into this thing, we're still getting 1800 out, which as we all know, the struggle to get to the 3200 watts worth of power output. Now, because of the design of the board, limits it just a little bit, but primarily it has to do with the way that the circuit is loaded around the components. Um, this amplifier's got a very broad, flat response plane. All Texas stars do. Uh, they sacrificed output power for a little bit. Um, sacrificed output power for a little bit broader spectrum response. So the amplifier will work in, a, in more places than just, you know, the chicken band. Um, you could probably use this on 10 meters and 12 meters with little to no problem um, trying to take it other places you're gonna have issues with it like you probably have to put an antenna tuner coming in and definitely put an antenna tuner on the output side um, just to get the RF to be resonant enough to go or make the circuit resonant enough to get the RF into the transistors but uh, like some of us if we were gonna go and build something we're looking to get absolutely every holy mother flipping watt out of the thing, right? This thing is designed to use about 80% of the transistor's potential and they have that, that potential spread out over a larger spectrum of space. Where most guys are trying to just occupy like this much bandwidth and get every single watt out of that, that circuit, the resonant response of the circuit, or this much bandwidth where this amplifier is designed to run. I like this much bandwidth. And instead of getting every single holy watt out of it, the broader you go in response on a, on a circuit, um, you reach a point where it's only about 60-70% responsive to the overall frequency, the wider you go in frequency. Um, but the, the smaller, narrower, and more monoband, mono frequency that you make a device, um, the more tightly resonant you can make the circuitry around a component. So therefore you're going to get more output potential. 
for a lot of years I was on I was led to the impression that the primary limitation on these or the reason for the output power difference between certain build designs uh, was the board infrastructure and I've taken you know a sweet 16 and made it make 2300 watts of power and I had to change a bunch of stuff I had to change a bunch of the turns ratios I had to change the way the RF moved around the pallet um, I had to change the combiner circuitry then I had to change the input and output loading of each one of the output input and output transformers um, the board just after adding a couple little jumpers for better ground the board ran fantastic it was the overall tuning and loading of the circuit and I understand why they did it I really do it makes sense this is a very tried and true and tested design that is for sure okay Let's hop to some time lapse. Let's rip this sucker apart and let's do some power wire upgrades. What do you think? Snake, I got Prime Minister in my right ear and I got you in my left ear. And I've been sitting here just kind of playing around, hanging loose and watching the band develop. I said, Hold, oh, King Snake, the landlord of the Northwest, second only to Prime Minister himself, got down. Man, I don't know what's going on. I caught the, the very beginning of that, King Snake. Then 509 fired down, took you clean out my radio. You were 50 DBs and he was over at 60. I'm just telling you what happened up here in the corner. Now I got Prime Minister hopping and hooping and hollering in my ear hole, telling me it's a different in his station. We'll see if the fog lifts. Maybe the big man himself will come to the band. You know. Because when you're truly in a pump house, you got to worry about rain, you got to worry about fog, you got to worry about boogers on your beam. You know what I mean. Hey, King Snake, good afternoon wave to you. But I heard old 766 come out here and tell me I needed to calm down. Shit. I don't worry about things like that. Duck's got to play. King Snake, BBI, got down. <laughs> I gotta tell you, the last time I was at Papa Doe's homeboy was in Dallas, Texas, and it happened to be with Prime Minister, believe it or not. <laughs> He's out on tour, and I was down there to put a put a mobile together for a guy. We ended up going to dinner. Make a good steak at Papa Doe's. Mr. King of the South, your friend in the corner with little itty bitty Watson, a great big old beam got down. Don't know the power of the dark side. If you come back to take me to Prime Commodore, hey, tell Prime out to come, come on back to Atlanta, Georgia, where he can take me back to Papa no doubt about it. Yeah, BBI, they're no way taller. The King of the South, got that. I think you moved your beam, old boy. I said, I think you moved your beam a little bit, a little bit closer up to me, because, brother, now you're all the way over at 60. You know that, our Mother Nature shifted just a hair. You're standing all by yourself. Standing all by yourself in a land of giants down there in Georgia. Mr. King Snake, your friend out here in the corner, decided I'd give you a quick little radio check from one side of the nation to the other. And I'll let him know he's sitting there listening to it live right, right here, right now. Hey, Prime Minister, King Snake says come back to Atlanta, Georgia. He wants to go back out to Papa Doe's. BBI got down. I appreciate that, man, because you wrote it like I told it, no doubt about it. Yeah, we had a good time with that champion when he was up. We had a wonderful time on this end. I think the best of it is sure. So, mighty fine, mighty fine. BBI, we're going to get this camera up the middle of the road. BBI, with your good time and self, the king of the south. Bye bye. I big dog. 
said, all right, big dog, I'll let you be. I don't want to hold you no more, and I absolutely have to. I just want to make sure that the reality was checked the way it needed to be. 0766 called me out here to the band, so I thought I would show up, show out, and put down a wood on the band. Hey, King Snake, I appreciate the conversation, my friend, on 27.025 this beautiful morning. I'm going to slide wide to the side myself. Quit plugging everybody's ears. The landlord of the Northwest. Seven states is my kingdom. BBI himself got down. Don't know the power of the dark side. That's what it's sure. Hey, BBI. Nobody, uh, you got that stick out there. Take care of BBI. So, King of the South and no King of the South got all the way down. BBI, goodbye. Hey, King Snake. Hey, King Snake. Tell 766 nobody moves, nobody gets hurt, and I'm gone. I'll see you. Bye. Hey, BBI, I can't hear nobody when you cut a bubble down. Hey, BBI, when you got a bubble down in five style, man, I don't hear nobody but you. So that'll be a bully size. Take care, BBI, the king of the South. Bye-bye. Hey, BBI, JV in the back woods want to know if I can bump it down and say hello. How do you do your real quick? Hello, my friend, Mr. BBI. BBI, I'm going to be in Georgia getting down. What's going on, JD? This is what's going on, my brother. I appreciate you putting the five at me, my friend. You gotta watch out. You got that big old monster in that state with you. You know, the king of the south. But I heard you in there because he wasn't on a hammer. But I heard you in there, my friend. I'll put the wave right back to you. You made the gate, made the video gate too. BBI in the corner reading the mail. I'm still smoking <laughs> this isn't as easy as I make it look I just done it a bunch of times what do you mean BBI all you're doing is solder and wire you're right but I'm not melting the jacket it's a delicate hands got to reach in there slow you got to work things out just a little bit you work them out a little bit better and you work them out a little bit better and then you get in there and you start really working things out. I'm just saying, it takes a skilled, steady hand sometimes. Now, I was really impressed with uh, the fact that these guys were losing their shit that the stuff has come up for the bench. And um, it's like I had to tell one guy, I was like, man, buckle up, princess. I don't know what to tell you. I got like six more coming up. And what I mean by that is I got like six more of that person's particular build and box that's here for repair. And um, basically what they were demanding of me on the phone was I don't repair them. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm, that's what I do. And uh, that's what I do. So I repair the boxes. And I make them better. And I modify things. And I teach. And I inspire. And like this afternoon, I spent what, almost three hours so far today on the phone. Um, teaching. People calling me with questions about this, that, or the other thing. And I educate them to the best of my knowledge on what I know to, how to help them answer their questions. A lot of people won't do that in this business. You'll find that they won't have any time for you unless you're spending money. Okay? Um, Since I quit taking on new projects on any level, new repairs, new builds, I'm not making money from anybody. So if you call me for advice, like, so there goes the phone right now. Phone's ringing right now. Hello, BBI. We'll be back, guys. Yeah, you got you got the copy. You understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh man, it's 
just hilarious to sit back and listen to you sometimes. You're like, damn, man, come on. It's okay to sit in a group of men and not have to make it about yourself. It's okay. It'd be a lot more fun if you weren't that way, but it's all good. Anyhow, gentlemen, I got to run. I got to take this big old fat ass of mine and go jump in my big old bike truck and drive down the road. So, <laughs> as soon as I started firing down, King Snake the band woke up again. Imagine that. I'll see you, big brother. You be good. Click, click, click. Get right. Go ahead. Take care. You be happy. Hey, you be happy. I heard you in there, 212. You got to remember, my ears are getting plugged by one of the biggest stations in the, the South down there at the moment. But I heard you in there, Susie, come up. Oh, 212, I heard you slide in there, brother, and I'll put a wave at you. as soon as you come up, nature boy. I said, I'll fire down as soon as you come up, nature boy. I'm going to squeeze in a couple more numbers and a couple more people, and you slid right on in there, brother, and I appreciate you putting a bump in my radio here this afternoon. I really do. Believe me when I say this. When I get out here and I get the opportunity to come talk with you boys down in the south or back east or in California, I truly feel lucky and graced. Because believe it or not, this is my job, this is my life, and this is my universe radio. I love it. And I'm grateful for it. If it wasn't for everybody out there wanting to help support me, send me work, and keep me keep me going, I wouldn't be here. So, I appreciate you, brother. I'll put the bump back at you, and I'll move it on down the road. Click, click, click. He's a good friend of mine. Don't worry about it, Nature Boy. It'll be all right. Tell him he needs to get a shorter skirt. I'll see you. Bye. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hey, B.I., you think you want me to tell Mercedes he needs a shorter skirt? Oh, man. He's just a real good friend of yours. All right. <laughs> Let me get my toes out of here. B.I., Nature Boy, I'm gone. You're running. You get on back to work. Hey, B.B.I., have a good day. This whiskey tree in the Carolina are waving a hand. You said around the beehives. I'll put the bump on you. I said I'll put the bump on you, 63. I'll see you. Bye-bye. Hey, Machete, tell Nature Boy the king of the south of what's up. Hey, Mr. Machete, when Nature Boy get up on for the tell me king of the south of what's up. Machete, the king of the south, got by. Machete, just tell him I'm a friendly five. Tell him I'm a friendly five. I'm not trying to suggest he's richer than that. He'd be a good friend of mine, but I'm going to just tell him I'm a friendly five. Machete, so king of the south, I'll tell Nature Boy I'm a friendly five, and I'm standing by. Tell old King Snake, I feel what's up. Machete, old Nature Boy, getting up. Ain't no tip of 245. Your friend, though. 
Mobile. I hear you, 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 Mobile. I hear Eight twenty-five. Tell seven two five. I said hello. You know who said it? Well, man, the rest of the world don't hear me. You hear me? That's all that matters. I take a one at a time. That's the way I tell a boys when they're ready to fight. Don't gang up. Are you telling me I'm not moving him in your radio 25? I said, are you telling me right now I'm not moving him in your radio? Or maybe I just didn't hold them all long enough. Hey, 25, BBI, be a nosy breaker. Hey, Mr. 325, I have to talk to him in radio. Mr. BBI, I want to know if I can, can move you. Hey, Mr. 60 and I had to fire down and say something. Woo-wee, you got that sucker scratched out. And you're transmitting 825. Didn't mean to cut your conversation clean off like that, but brother, I had to let you know that you're putting it out there on a band, and I think you know you're doing it. Damn it, boy. Shame on the mess. That's a work in progress. I sure am quivering over here going, God, I'm scared. I don't even want to see what's going to happen next. You said you're going to try and do it better next time around. It's a work in progress, and you're going to move it forward. 25, I don't know what else you're going to do. You can't make my needle go no more farther to the right. You know that's a goddamn fact. Hey, 25, appreciate you, big dog. You got the boys over there singing. That tube is just a ringing, and you're transmitting. But you said it's a work in progress. I hate to see what's coming next, break. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. It's already in the works, big brother. Already in the works. Already in the works. We got another half of Duck Legacy Station to go. This is only half. Hey, Mr. Media, we ain't been sitting on our foots down here, Ken Bigger. We have been working on this. We got another half a station to go, and we hope to improve this stuff like a real soul. I want to lay your needle in the corner like you lay in mine. Hey, Mr. BBI, that's no lie, because my radio says so, Mr. BBI. I got down right there. Oh, well, boy, you've known me for a long time. You ain't got to prove nothing to me. I said, you know me for a long time. You ain't got nothing to prove to me. You're one of them guys that walks softly if it carries a big old stick in your back pocket. I know who you are. It's all good. You said you're going to double down on what you already got. Got another whole station coming. You ain't sitting idly on your hands, and you're going to get more done. You want to lay that needle all the way over in the corner just like I do to you. Well, brother, I'm here to tell you that's exactly what you got going down on 27025 here today, my friend. Don't let anybody tell you any different. 825. Just thought you ought to know. Ain't no slouch. I said you ain't no slouch. 410? Yeah. 410. 
this whole damn segment because I'm an idiot yo man I got to talking and gabbing and yapping and running my mouth and I was talking mad smack and I totally didn't even have the mic on I'm real proud of myself right now by the way all right, so let's rehook everything up. We'll run the same test that we just ran on video with no audio, but this time we're gonna have audio, that way you all can have the viewing pleasure of it. Sound like a deal? Sounds like a deal to me. All right. So now we've hooked up our little bench two pill. Yay, BBI. Let's go get our bird meter back out that we had out and already put away once. Let's re-demonstrate the exact same units of measure we had before. You guys are going to love this. This is my 1.2 million watt 0 through 30 megahertz slug. That friggin' hot. I'm proud of that. I made that myself, does it show? Okay. Man, I really am ready to be done here. <laughs> God. Let's see if we can screw up any more on camera here. I'll leave this one here. Put this one here. Oh, really? And then we'll put this here. It's act like we've done this once or twice, right? You ever have one of the moments where you're just kind of like, God, man, how else can I F this up? Okay. 50 watt element. Fifty hot watts. Okay. Turn it around. So we're reading in reverse. Okay, doke. So, let's come over here. Let's readjust our drive level. Hello. actually plug the radio into the driver buddy it's like five major things I've just screwed up on on camera in this last segment alone <sighs> hello too much audio hello okay 200 watts for drive Six. Six major things I just screwed up on camera. It might be time to quit. What do you think? Hear that or my mind's on other shit. Oh, that clicking noise is because BBI doesn't know the difference between input and output. God. Noob. Okay. Hello. I knew it was going to do that. Laid it in a corner. 2x. 
Hello. Ah, laid it in the corner once again. 5x. So now full deflection all the way over here on the right is 5,000 watts. Hello. Ah, there's our 3,000 watts with 200 watts of drive. Hello. Ah, 3,200. Average numbers are what? Hello. Ah, little low. All right, let's pan out here for a second. And we'll zoom on over here, nice and artsy fartsy kind of. Hello, 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 hello. It's about two whole whopping watts of input reflect. You need to focus here. Am I? Focus, focus. Don't make me do you, Manuel. If I go Manuel, I'm going to call Sony up and cry at him. Okay, here we go. We already went ahead in the last segment, and I'm not going to reshoot it because I can't. We adjusted the Arco here. Now, please note that black stripe. That is black ceramic metal embedded magnetic schmizum. No, it's just black um, ceramic fingernail polish that's not conductive. But it is a certain kind that fluoresces under ultraviolet light. So therefore I know if you've been in there and fiddly farted with it, because I don't want people to put anything in there. Like I was explaining in the last segment, man cannot help thyself. We can't as a species, you being a man, I being a man. And I say this with somewhat confidence due to the fact that 99.99% of my viewership, according to YouTube, is all male. And I swear that last 0.1% some dude out there using his girlfriend's account to watch my YouTube videos. It's okay. I, do, I knew you don't get into radio to meet chicks. You just don't. And the only reason chicks get into radio is because their dudes are into radio usually. Now, I, I say that with a, a smile on my face because I've met, I've had one female customer out of my entire, all my 10 years of doing this now, eight years of doing this now. Um, her husband's the one that called me and she's, he's like, I got him on the phone, honey. Hold on, buddy. He, she wants to talk to you. And I'm like, she, come to find out it was, I built an amp for her. It had nothing to do with him. And she was the one that had like the extra class license in the house and he had the no code technician license. Mm-hmm. Just saying, somebody in the house is an alpha. It's all good. Us as a human species can't stop ourselves Oh, look, that's meant to be turned with a screwdriver. Let's put a screwdriver to it. Maybe it'll help it do a little bit more watts. It sure will. It'll make you do a whole bunch of false power because your input reflex is going to be so stinking high. I'm here to tell you what. <laughs> so leave it alone. It's a special kind of fingernail polish. And I had to get the kind that fluoresced. And the reason I had to get the, reason, the kind that fluoresced as well. It's one, it's really hard to find, and two, that's what my daughter had to use. So I was like, well, that'll be cool. That'll make a good anti, anti tweedly don't, don't mess with me kind of thing. Okay. Let's have ourselves a little bit more fun. Now, that's what you're supposed to drive it with. There is an incredibly steeply diminishing return as we go up and drive. Now, I am going to tech textbookly overdrive this like every CB operator on the face of the earth. Because remember, that extra 200 watts is really going to help us get the wood down on the guy that we're trying to key on right now. So let's go ahead and start turning up our drive. Hello. Or 200 watts. Hello. 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 So we're seeing about 34 3,500 watts worth of drive. So let's go ahead. We're going to turn off the Texas Star. We're going to take this back to zero. So now it's reading face value on the slug 1x. Hello. 400 watts. We literally doubled the drive and we picked up 300 watts of power by doubling the drive. 200 peak watts max. This thing will last you forever. If I'm not mistaken, 
It's pretty close to what the other one did as well in power output. All right. Well, this concludes this portion of the test segment. So you ask yourself, but BBI, what else do you have left to test? The fans, you say? Yes, the fans. A very vital, vital, vital component of this little thing. Now, I always give Texas Star credit for this older style style of box. Um, this is almost double the amount of heat sink that we would currently use on a 16 pill. Double. I love the fact that there's that much air being moved across these transistors and and across this much heat sink. I also love the fact that the upper and lower cabinets of this are pressurized independently of each other. It's always been very attractive to me. Well, let's get this, uh, this old girl out the way. Can you believe we picked up almost a full 800 watts by changing out this little 22 gauge wire? 14 gauge or whatever, 16 gauge wire. These, I was always told, I've never, I haven't seen it yet, but I was always told that these were fire bug boxes. They had a tendency to get hot and burn up. I haven't seen it yet. It hasn't shown up on my workbench for a repair quite yet. But in the end scheme of things, it's only a matter of time. All right. Aftermarket plug. The only thing that we need to test here with the tins is to make sure all four fans are turning. You'd be surprised how many of these older fan kits, God, there's not even dust in this. How many of these older fan kits, the fans don't want to chooch no more. They just don't. whatsoever. These tins are horrible. They rust out like you fart on them wrong, they rust. It's okay, I got to cure for it. So the original fans in these apparently are Flomax. They're 12 volts and they're about half an amp, 0.7 amps. I think they're working. Okay, so Cleaned up the top and the bottom tin, shot them with some rust inhibitor, just a little bit of surface rust. Went ahead and whacked it down with a little bit of steel wool, knocked the, knocked the rust off, not affect the coat too bad on the cabinet. We're good. We're good. Now, let's put the whole mess back together. Okay. <clears throat> all reassembled and I even took a minute and soldered the connections and then did the proper kind of heat shrink this is marine grade heat shrink with epoxy so that won't come apart on you ever again all right we're done let's do the money shot that's a cool shot I'm here to teach I'm here to educate I'm here to learn um, I'm just here doing this video on my life, video on the things I do. Guys, I just fix the stuff. If it gets built wrong and it comes here, I've got to repair it. That's just the bottom line. It is what it is, okay? I'm not going to get excited about it, but calling me up and trying to intimidate me to do other, and that's not right, nor is that correct to the customer. So. You guys wouldn't believe some of the stuff that's coming in, in here and gotten repaired and went out of here that wasn't on video because the customer was afraid that the original builder was going to have small kittens. OK, 
Okay, it is what it is. It is. Okay? When I first started this video out, the card had 486 minutes worth of record time on it. I now have nine. It takes forever to lay all these wires down and do all of this properly and hand tie everything and solder, pre-solder and post-solder and clean up and do it. deflux and reflux and it's a pain. But I love it and this is my job and I'm not going to change the way I do things. So now that we've put all this time and energy into making sure that this amp runs beautifully and this amp runs beautifully but this is the one we did the video on don't do us a disjustice by not giving us a good power system good alternator good batteries invest in super capacitors buy the proper size eyelet proper size wire get a hydraulic crimp set learn how to punk a hole in the eyelet and uh, backfill it with solder it increases the electrical connection by 25%. I don't care what anybody says. I'll debate with them until they're blue in the face. I've been called a noob and a novice. Believe that shit. Um, <laughs> because I believe in soldering eyelids. Whatever, man. People have got their opinions on doing things. It's like assholes. Everybody's got one. So, Yet another Viking sent back out into the universe ready to rock and roll. I think this will be the fourth one I've done. F yeah, four. It's pretty rare. Um, gentlemen, just big thanks for tuning in, checking it out, and watching the videos as always. Big shout out to Siglent. Thank you guys at Siglent Technologies, where all your metering and scope needs could possibly be met at a reasonable, big, decent price too, isn't it that? Um, excess power, those are my guys, man. They make the best batteries in the world, the best super capacitors, and like right around the corner in the same building is Mechman. Some of the best alternators on this planet. Big shout out to Bird, Coaxel. And as always, a big thanks to you guys. All right, I'm done talking. You're going to be done watching, and I'm on to the next one. I think the next one's another strap on radio. I'll see you guys.